What? Huh? <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> I love your reaction. <laughs> what happened? I, I uh, let's talk about Slambo was starting a new punk band. Oh. The Backyard Ball Fondlers. The Backyard Ball Fondlers. That's a good name. Yeah. I do like it, yeah. You might be sued and blocked. <laughs> You'll definitely and be blocked. And called homophobic. Yeah. That yeah. is a very homophobic name to call yourself a ball fondler. Yeah, well, you I mean, know. Uh, you know, it's, it's called homophobic yeah, uh, before. Uh, uh, fondling a man's balls is very homophobic. Homophobic <laughs> it's, it's, it's homophobic a, it's a very It's a very homophobic it's thing to do. Homophobic act. Figuring your asshole, too, is very, very homophobic. Never finger your of, asshole or you're a homophobe. Finger in yeah. the asshole. <laughs> yeah. Fingering my hole. Fingering my <laughs> hole. Ah, <laughs> oh, nicey, nice. All right. This shit is nasty. I don't know why I'm still drinking it. Oh, perf. Robin Slip Show. Hi, it's Marissa. Marissa from the Vanish Podcast. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. And uh, your show, the the Vanish Podcast, it's about missing persons, correct? Correct. Cool. What uh? What made you want to do a show about that? Well, um, I guess there's a long story to that and a short story. So I'll start with the short story because uh, I was a big fan of podcasts. Mm -hmm. And what I saw that was missing from the true crime genre was someone actually covering lesser known missing persons cases. I saw a lot of you know, the well-known cases that you see on the news. Yeah. But I kept asking other shows to cover some of these cases, and they weren't doing it, so I just decided to do it. Huh. The longer story is that I've always had an interest in you know, missing persons cases because my great-grandfather disappeared in Philadelphia in 1928, and he was never found. Wow. And so... Um, my grandfather and his brother went into foster care and it was a really bad situation for them to grow up in mm. and they never got answers and i know that some of my grandfather you know some of my aunts wonder if he started a new life and if we have other family out there yeah so it's one of those things that you grew up wondering about you grew up uh you know hearing about so it was always stuck in my mind, and so I guess I was always drawn to that, mm. that, those kinds of stories, right? So I guess that's where my fascination comes from. But then, you know, I had a love for podcasts. Yeah, and I cool. Saw, yeah. So uh, I saw, I'm sorry, I got to interrupt you for a second because you're very low, and any attempts on my oh. end to hire your volume is just causing a lot of static. So I didn't know if. Have, is this better? Sounded a little better. A little bit. Still hear static, but is that. I don't know if you have like a mic volume uh, control. I do have a mic volume control, and I, I have it up now. It does sound decent, better. It does okay. sound better. Yeah, I think. Marissa, I just oh sorry. I just turned it up, but I um, I can see if I can get it up any higher with my preferences here. Okay. Um. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. So is that is that yes, better? That is yeah. much that better. Is perfect. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. What um I wanted to ask too um the, the stories you cover um do people approach you or do you find them on your own? So when I started, I would find them on my own, but then started or people started coming to me. Okay. So now I have like a case request form on my website and I typically get th like three to five requests from families of the missing each day and I have wow. one episode a week so I'm kind of under mm. this pile yeah. of, yeah. Do, do you ever like feel bad like you haven't gotten one yet or like that's that's a lot like when you're getting that many, that many yeah. a week. I do feel bad and and especially when I get contacted by families who have somebody who just went missing because oh. they have a sense of urgency. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, when it, if you talk to somebody who has like a 10 year old case or a 20 year old case, yeah, they're, you know, they don't have that same desperation level because I, 
you know, they've been going through this for so much longer. Yeah, right. they've made more peace with the situation. Yeah. It's... Kind of embraced it for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, have you ever had anybody uh, approach you that, you that thinks you didn't do the story correctly? But you, you also, you, uh, you interview the, the family members, correct? Of the, of the Co missing people? Correct. Yes, okay. I do. And I've never had anybody get mad at me about an episode. So mm. that's good. That is good. I listened to the newest one with uh, Unique Harris. That was, this was a really good, really good episode. Uh, uh, she was, uh, at first, I didn't know if she was younger or old, but she was like in her 20s, correct? Yeah, she was 24. And uh, had her, um, was it her daughter and nieces or nephews? It was, it was uh, her two sons who were really little and then her nine-year-old niece. So okay. her, her niece was a little bit older and was able to, you know, contact her mom in the morning when they couldn't find Unique. So wow, that that doesn't make sense. Like uh, that she would be taken, but not the kids or anything. It's just so strange to me. So strange. It's a really mysterious case. Do you think that uh, when people get taken, is it normally by somebody they know or uh, somebody that they don't? It's usually somebody that you know. Stranger yeah. abductions are like one percent. Wow. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, because they always tell you when you're growing up, like, stay away from don't strangers, strangers. Don't yeah. talk strangers. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think the media plays up those situations more. It's more of a gets people watching. Yeah. If you play up that fear of the unknown, and often it's the stranger, or not the stranger, it's the monster that you know, not the monster that you don't know. Yeah. There was a couple other things, too, though. Uh, you said uh, that she witnessed a murder, like, a week or two before she disappeared. Like, that's crazy. Uh, and then didn't somebody call her phone that nobody knows who it was? Yeah, so she did witness a murder, although that has since been solved. For a long time, people threw that around as a possibility, but the police say that that's unrelated. Now, she did talk to somebody at three in the morning, hmm. but the police will not release the identity of that person. And I don't know why that is yeah. to me. There must be something to it. I'm not saying that that person did anything to her, but yeah. maybe she said something to that person that is important to the investigation. So wow. how long ago was that? Was it 2010? I think. Yeah. 2010. Okay. Have you ever uh, covered a case that's been resolved? Yes, I have several now at this point that have been resolved. I've had a few people who have been found alive. Cool. Oh, wow. And uh, just the other day, I covered a missing teen last year. I think it was maybe last May or June. And she was found her, I should say her remains were found by somebody who was walking through the woods and they saw a bone sticking out of a um, mm. like a shallow grave and yeah. so they were able to identify that as her and her mom and stepdad had already been arrested prior to her being located so that is you know pending <clears throat> trial at this point. Wow. Had you talked to them for that no, interview? No. Oh. No. Okay. I I actually spoke to an advocate for a missing persons organization. They had asked me to cover her case. Okay. Because at that point they already had a feeling that something was hinky with the mom. Wow. And so that whole situation was already looking bad when that happened. So mm. um but I've had a couple other I've had a couple other ones where uh, the person that, you know, the people have been found uh, a gentleman who went missing in New Orleans after taking uh, some kind of drug. I think it was called 2CE. And there were all these sightings of him all over the place, but it ended up being that he was found this summer in a river and he had been missing since uh like new year's new year's eve mm. so what um do you ever do updates on on if you do uh find out what happened do you do updates on those stories on, yeah on the show sometimes i do some of them there's just not much information so i'll just update on social media like sometimes it's just they release a 
a sentence really like this person's yeah. remains were located and that's all you know oh. but other times um i covered a missing mom and her baby hmm. and they were found and it was actually the grandparents were hiding them in another state wow. so they were hiding them from the father of the of the baby. Uh, it, that's what I figured situation. when you said that. Yeah, I was going to ask too. Like, do some people just disappear on their own? Like, I, I figured yeah. that would be part of it as well. Mm -hmm. Like, people just mm -hmm. dipping out on whatever. Yeah. Well, they they were able to uh, locate them, and now the mom and the grandparents are all. Uh, they have pending charges for. Um, kidnapping and, and hiding that baby. Wow. So. Yes. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. I'm going to break the flow of everything slightly right here because I feel like you're standing in the middle of a crime scene right now because I hear sirens I in the think background. That's out of here, though. Was that, that was that from us? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure that was from us. There's like <laughs> sirens in I the background. I heard sirens. I heard a guy screaming. <laughs> I'm like, wait. I think the no. sirens are out He's here. just like on the job right now. <laughs> <laughs> are you investigating right now, Marissa? Marissa, I have a missing uh charger for a PSP. I didn't know if you could help find that because I've been going crazy for months. I want to play my PSP and I can't oh. find the charger. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with that. I'm always missing stuff in my in, in my house. Uh -huh. That's not my. Uh... <laughs> no, you find other people's missing people. <laughs> <laughs> what um <clears throat> um. Uh, what... Yeah, but somebody screaming. That was probably my neighbor's teenager. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. I thought it was the Slambo, like, but I didn't hear him scream, but no, I heard a Slambo no. in the background. <laughs> what oh, up? I have, um, I have, my microphone's, like, super, super sensitive, so. <laughs> what, um, well, what, is, can you tell us, um, an upcoming episode story that you have? Sure, I have, um, coming up. I'll tell you the one that uh, that's not coming out this week, but the following week. Okay. Um, I'm covering a case that's uh, related to a serial killer. They call him the Canal Killer, and he's actually hasn't been convicted yet. But they, um, he his trial's coming up. Although they keep pushing it back, that happens all the time. Yeah. But. He has, they've linked him to several women who were murdered and mm. they linked him by DNA years later. So he is also a, a suspect for this case of a missing 13 year old girl from the early 90s. And he is not, he does not have any charges related to her disappearance. And her sister is really upset about that because she feels like there's no justice for her. Um, her sister was two years younger than her. And what happened was she was going out selling books like for a bookathon at school. Like, do you remember when we were kids and you used to go sell stuff for school? And nowadays yeah. they're like, no, don't Fun do that. Reasons, yeah. You used to have candy you bars. You go door to door with the magazines. Yeah. yeah. The catalogs. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's what she was doing. And... <clears throat> The sister was supposed to go with her, but the sister had a crush on some boy, and she said, no, I'm not going to go with you. So the missing sister went on her own, Okay. and that's when, when she disappeared. Well, he apparently confessed oh. to her murder to a former girlfriend or wife, and she, once they caught him with the DNA, she came forward and told them about this other girl who has never been found and they were able to tie two and two together that it was this missing teenage girl. So right now they have him charged for a couple murders, but they, mm. they, they don't have any charges for her. And I think, um, her sister who has lived with so much regret for all yeah. these years for yeah. not going with her. I bet. Yeah. So that's, she's trying to get some support behind her to 
ask the district attorney to please consider charges relating to her sister as well. So, um, but the whole thing is really disturbing because the murders that he has been tied to were really gruesome. And yeah. what he said he did to her sister is really terrible. Oh, so, man. yeah. Where was this? It was in Arizona. Okay. And did the, like the, he did he admit to doing it or he admitted it to this uh, I think it's his former wife and he admitted it to her and so after he got caught in relation to the DNA that was found on the women who have been found she came forward and said hey he told me about this girl that came to the door and he pulled her in and he stabbed her and so she knew this other story yeah. and she she's talked about it and if you look him up he's if you look up the canal killer he's really weird and he had like an old cop car that he bought and he turned it into a, a zombie hunting car and would drive around town and would pose for pictures with the police it, it's kind of weird like almost a local like celebrity a, yeah. Wow. Like, oh man. I heard he also did a fantasy football podcast. No, or <laughs> that was a different guy. Okay. But, wow, that is that is crazy. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, serial killers, uh, they do try to get in with people, and they do try they, to be charismatic. They like to that's crazy. To the a zombie yeah, hunting van and posing with. People. Wow. Oh my god. What a freak. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, it's got a lot of, the story has a lot of layers to yes. it. It's really bizarre. If you if you look him up, you can see pictures of him posing with the cops, and it's almost, like, a taunting in a way. Like, yes. I can be this close to them, and they can't catch me. Yeah, wow. I was going to ask, too, Marissa, um, do any, has any uh, story rattled you more than, mm. than others? Uh, there have been many that have, uh, oh, I would say a few that really have gotten to me. There's one that I covered early on that always gets me. You guys may have heard of this case. It's from South Jersey. Um, Mark Heimbaugh, who disappeared in the early 90s, I think he was 91, and he was an 11-year-old boy, and all of the possible suspects that they've looked at over the years are really terrible and I have a son who's that age so it really hit home for me yeah. and when there's one guy a couple years ago this guy came forward and he said to the police apparently he said to the police that he had come come forward in I think the early 90s because he had this man who he says uh is responsible for his disappearance showed him a homemade pornographic video with this boy and he talks about it and it's really disturbing and so apparently he came forward years later because now he's terminally ill and he didn't want to die and not say this to the police again so that guy is the guy he's talking about is currently incarcerated yeah near near where i live and i think wow he's a, he's gone up for parole and been denied but it's only a matter of time right and so wow. he actually he was actually he's incarcerated now for creating child pornography so what this man is saying is not too far out of the realm of possibility yeah i guess totally Holy. Put them all to death yeah i Just put them to fucking death oh <laughs> wow yeah, yeah. That's, that is rough that, yeah, yeah, and I'll say recently, I just covered uh, the disappearance of Christopher Abeda, mm -hmm. which is a case from 1986, and it really stuck out to me because he was just seven months old, and my little guy it was seven months old at the time I was covering this case. Wow, and yeah. Yeah, I was interviewing his sister, who was 15 at the time. There was a huge age gap there, and... She's talking about all these things that this baby is doing, right? And, you know, her little brother was just starting to eat, you know, solid food and he was slurping up spaghetti. And when she said that to me, I'm thinking, oh, like my son's doing that same thing. And I mm -hmm. just to imagine 
him just being gone and having no answers. Uh, oh, it was just, it was traumatic to even think mm. about for me. Too relatable. How do you emotionally deal with that? Well, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult for me to, I, you know, sometimes I have to, you know, just step away for a little while. And what I do really to disconnect is to just go spend some time with my kids because they don't ever think about this stuff. So they're, they're laughing and playing and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and so it really just clicks me right, right out of it. And then I come back to it later, but yeah, it's really tough. And I think earlier on I was, I allowed myself to get a little bit more emotionally involved. Hmm. And then at one point I, I learned that I had to kind of yeah. put up a little bit of a wall okay. just to, to protect myself so I can continue on yeah. with creating the show. I was going to ask too, um, uh, do you ever get shit from law enforcement the way you cover a story if you uh, knock them for how they've handled uh -huh. the case? Well, they don't usually contact me directly, although there is one case that I covered that immediately after I covered the case and his mom voiced her concerns about how his case was being handled, three days after the release of the podcast, they closed his case and they won't prove that he was found. They, they've given three different reasons for why they closed it. They've told three different stories. They said um, that somebody saw him, that, and then they told me, which I have recorded, and I played it in another episode about him. They said to me that he had, uh, they had no more leads to run down, so they closed it. Hmm. And then they told a listener contacted them and they told her in an email. So I have that too, that one could say that he's alive. Wow. wow. So what you're saying though, is that your podcast caused them to close this case. That's what I was wondering. Well, I don't know. I mean, I know that his, his family feels as though that was done in retaliation for her, for his mom speaking poorly about them. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, I can actually send you an article that was written about this because I've been kind of fighting with them for months to mm. release the records regarding why the case was closed. And, you know, there's the Freedom of Information Act and and by law, when a case is closed, they should be able to release certain things, even if they redact, you know, personal information, if they cut out somebody's somebody's personal phone number or something. But they, um, they've been very elusive about it. And so um, I just keep pressing along and, and trying to get answers because as of right now, no other police department will open it a case for his mom and she calls around to coroner's offices and sometimes they say, well, we have somebody here who matches your son's description, but have the Las Vegas Metro police department call us and she calls them and they won't call her back or anything. So wow. she's stuck. Yeah. Wow. Well, I hate to end it on this note, but we actually we do, do have to we wrap do have this to up. Wrap this up, Marissa. Thank you so much for talking to us. It's, it's been oh, awesome. you're welcome. What um, where can everybody find you? Um, well, I mean, you can find the show on any podcast app. I have a website, thevanishedpodcast.com. I'm on Facebook. I have a page and a discussion group, and then uh, on on Twitter, I'm at the Vanish Pod. And then I'm on Instagram as well. Sometimes people, they are listening, they want to go look at pictures. So mm. I have, you know, Instagram for that too. Does that so. go with the cases? Like the pictures? Yeah. Wow. Yes. What I do is when I release an episode, I'll put a picture of that person up. Okay. Is that, is on that on every episode? You have the picture of the, the person? Um, almost every episode. I didn't, um, I didn't start my Instagram ac account right away when I, when I started the show. So they start somewhere within maybe like the first 
six months or so of the show so cool cool before we do let you go i have to ask because um uh, you, your podcast and style reminds me of one of my favorite tv shows that has been around forever i don't think it's airing anymore but like are you a fan of unsolved mysteries oh yeah Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh, I grew up watching on. Yeah, me too. too. There were so yeah. many nights I couldn't sleep. Like Dude. after you see like uh, and that, that, a reenactment, th- th- yeah. and that theme song of somebody in like oh, the back Robert seat of a Stack car. Robert, Robert Stack, yeah. That fucking oh, theme song. Oh, that show, <laughs> rad. That show messed me up. Messed you guys me up. know that that's on Amazon now. I yeah. Oh, I actually I actually start no. They actually released all Just of the, the seasons ones. are oh. on Amazon. I actually started rewatching it, and they have oh. all the updates thrown in the episodes. It's still amazing. Really? Yeah, really? oh, yeah. I love everything. That. Yeah, everything's like updated. Wow. It's still just an Ooh, amazing I show. That, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you watch it, you're like, oh, they're totally. This is going to be totally solved. I can't wait for this update. And then you're like, oh my god, it's been so many years, and that wasn't solved. It's crazy. Some of them. Wow, yeah. that is that is <laughs> crazy. So was that kind of like uh, you drew inspiration from that then? Yeah, I used to watch that religiously growing yeah. up. Okay. But I think it started with Scooby Doo for me and then <laughs> okay. I love Scooby Doo. I got yeah. I, I got one question. Are mm-hmm. there any like disappearances that you've you've looked at where the circumstances are just really bizarre? Like like real so Nothing st- adds up. Yeah, nothing adds up. It's just so strange that you can't even like figure Make out. heads or tails. Yeah. Yes, yes. Hmm. Those make me insane, and I will sit there and think about them forever. There was uh, I did a two part episode on Jonathan Hamilton a couple months ago. I think it was maybe November, and that one is so bizarre. But I actually got the police department to release a bunch of audio of interviews and stuff that they did. So it's an interesting listen because you get to hear some of the people they interviewed. But that one. There's so many people involved with changing stories. It's like, well, what the heck happened? Right. What they're what they're saying doesn't even make sense. Nothing like, why was he up. even yeah. there? <laughs> wow, wow. All right, we do have to Rizzo, let you go. Though. We sorry, we could probably dude, talk to you but... for like the next two hours if we really wanted to. But <laughs> thanks again. Well, you guys have a good night. You too. Take care, Marissa. Thank All you right. very much. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.